Okay, for this next video lecture, so we will be discussing about the procedures in evaluating sample resort results for substantive tests of details. Okay, so for substantive procedures, the auditor should project monetary errors, okay, that is found in the sample to the population. So this will also be considered as the effect on, or I mean, and consider the effect of the projected error on the particular test objective and on the other areas of the audit as well. So again, substantive procedures is concerned on the monetary values. And then, as we all know, that the samples were taken from the population so that this will be tested and evaluated. And then the result will also be, um, be able to be inferred to the population. Okay, So the, t the auditor will project the total error to the population so as to obtain a broader view of the scale uh, of the scale of these errors because in this case these errors were from the result of the samples and the auditors will make sure that indeed these errors are uh, somewhat representative to the errors that may exist as well in the population and then after that as you could still remember in our previous video lecture this will be compared to the tolerable error to determine if um, there is high or low risk of material misstatement that exists. For further substan substantive procedures, the tolerable misstatement will be the amount less than or equal to the auditor's uh, preliminary estimate of materiality okay, that is used for individual account balances that is being audited. So this is how uh, it is done for the... Um, substantive procedures okay, in the case of tolerable misstatements. Okay, so next, uh, when an error has been established and this is considered to be as an anomaly, okay, it may be excluded uh, when projecting the sample errors to the population because the effect of such error, if that is uncorrected, and uh, this still needs to be considered an additional uh, projection of the non, uh, anomalous errors, meaning um, this should be taken uh, separately and probably this will be uh, uh, discussed with the management in which they should uh, correct such error. If these errors are not corrected, then later on um, it will be included in the uh, sample errors which are considered to be non-anomalous okay so that's the danger with that okay so therefore the auditor should make sure that he has to uh, apply the appropriate audit procedures and discuss it with the management and the management as well shall uh, make or take the actions to correct such errors okay so if the account balance or class of transactions has been divided into different groups or strata so the error is projected for each stratum separately. Okay, that's how it is done. For projected errors plus anomalous errors for each strata or stratum, um, they will be combined when considering the possible effect of errors in the total account balance or class of transaction. So this is the case in the uh, uh, when the auditor stratified okay, the items for evaluation. If the total amount or projected error plus the anomalous error is less but close to that which the auditor deems tolerable, if that is the case, then uh, the auditor will consider the persuasiveness of the results in the light of the audit procedure, meaning if this will satisfy the auditor or if he ne still needs to uh, perform additional substantive procedures. Another is the auditor will also consider uh, to it appropriate to obtain additional audit evidence okay, to support further uh, and to make sure that he gathers uh, appropriate and sufficient audit evidence. The total of projected error plus anomalous error is the auditor's best estimate in the error, uh, best estimate I mean of the error in the population. However, sampling results are affected by the sampling risk. Okay, again, sampling risk is... Uh, 
the samples may not be representative of the population. So meaning there might be uh, items which should be included in the evaluation which will not uh, which were not included in the sample. So therefore, misstatement were not detected. Okay. Thus, when the best estimate of error is close to the tolerable error, the auditor in this case will recognize the risk that a different sample would result also in the different best estimate. Okay. Considering the results of other audit procedures helps this, uh, uh, the, helps the auditor in assessing this. Risk. So this is how should be, or the auditor should perform okay, these procedures when uh, this case uh, is at hand. Okay. So qualitative factors to be considered. So what are the qualitative factors? For instance, if fraud has been discovered, okay. So a simple projection of them will not be sufficient. Okay, and the auditor will need to obtain a thorough understanding of their causes and as well as its effects on the FS, okay? So that's why uh, uh, qualitative factors are very important, okay? So as mentioned also in our previous video lecture, well, where if the deviation uh, exists, um, the reasons behind it should also be considered by the auditor and must be discussed with the management. Okay, so we will proceed with the different... Uh, types of uh, approaches where the auditor can use okay, in uh, applying the procedures for the sample uh, results. Okay, so the first uh, approach is value-weighted selection approach. Okay, what is value-weighted selection approach? This identifies the sampling unit as the individual monetary units that make up the population. Okay? So, this approach um, is used in defining the sample units and uh, that ensures that the audit effort is directed to the larger value items because uh, these items have a greater chance of selection and can result in smaller sample size. Okay. Um, a common type of evaluated uh, selection approach is monetary or peso sampling unit. So, meaning this is normally used in substantive procedures. So, monetary unit sampling, this views the population not as a population of accounts of different sizes but as a population of monetary units. Okay. So, the size of the population is taken to be the total number of monetary units and all the accounts and each unit is selected with equal probability. So later on uh, in the last part of our module, we will discuss how it is done. Okay. So simply stated or in other words, uh, each peso in the population has an equal chance of being selected but the likelihood of selecting any one logical unit for testing is proportional to its size. Thus, monetary unit sampling is also known as probability proportional to size sampling or PPS sampling. So, meaning the, the probability of the item to be selected in the sample, to be, the part, to be a part of the sample, is based on their size, okay, in their monetary unit. Okay, so monetary unit sampling is most often used when... Uh, one or a few population errors is expected only, but it is most appropriate when no errors are expected. So this is when value-weighted selection approach is used. Uh, this method is more likely to detect overstatements, okay, normally for our asset accounts and income accounts, rather than understatements. Because here, um, uh, it focused on the larger uh, value amount. Okay. Some advantages of using this uh, approach is it is generally easier to use. Uh, it automatically results in a stratified sampling because uh, the, the, there will be a classification based on the monetary unit. Okay, and it is usually, or it usually results in smaller sample size because uh, normally larger amounts are uh, grouped. Okay, uh, but this is the, in the case if only few or no misstatements are expected. Okay, please take note of that. Another approach is the classical variable sampling appro approach. 
Okay? So, under this approach, uh, auditors treat each individual item in the population as a sampling unit. So, this uh, uses normal distribution theory to evaluate the sample. And this met method also is appropriate when the auditor's objective is to determine the true but unknown monetary va balance. Unlike with the weighted value, uh, it, it uh, uh, aims to detect overstatement. Okay, but in this case, for the classical variable sampling, it uh, will or its objective is to detect uh, that the estimate uh, or the true estimate but unknown monetary balance of an item. Okay, so there are three common types of classical variable sampling. Okay, we have the ratio estimation. So meaning, uh, this is a classical variable sampling that uses the ratio of the audit amounts to the recorded amounts in the sample. This, uh, the purpose of this is to estimate the total pass amount of the population and the allowance for sampling risk, getting the ratio from the population. Uh, another is, this is most appropriate, especially when the size of the statement is proportional to the book values of the item. So, there, these are the following steps that is involved. Uh, first, determine the audit value for each item or sample. Next, uh, the auditor will calculate the ratio between the sum of these samples and the samples from the book values. Next, the auditor will determine the estimated population value. So, he will multiply the total population book value with the ratio that is uh, computed. Okay. The next type of classical variable is difference estimation. So, difference estimation, uh, this is a sampling, sampling technique that uses the average difference between the audited amounts and the individual recorded amounts. So, the purpose of this is to estimate the total audited amount of a population and allowance for sampling risk. So, difference estimation, this is mostly appropriate when the size of misstatements does not vary significantly with the book value. So, somewhat the same with the uh, ratio estimation. Okay. So, the steps under difference estimation involves, first, the determination of the audited values, okay, also, of each sample item. Then, the auditor will calculate uh, the difference between the audited and the book value sample item. Next, he will calculate the average difference. Next, uh, the auditor will determine the estimated population value. So, he will use the average difference rate uh, to be multiplied to the total population units. And then, he will add or subtract this value okay, from the recorded book value to, differ, uh, uh, to determine the difference. Okay. And the last is the mean per unit or PPU estimation. So this classical variable sampling technique will project the sample average or the mean okay, to the total population. So this is done by multiplying the sample average by the number of items in the population. So this uh, uh, estimate is appropriate when the individual population items do not have recorded values. Okay, for example, um, the statement of financial position shows a total of uh, for accounts receivable, but the individual invoice supporting the balances are not available. So this is where mean per unit estimation is being used. Okay, so what are the steps involved under this uh, approach? First, uh, determine the same as with the other approaches. Uh, the auditor will first determine the audited values okay, for each item, then calculate the average audit per uh, audited amount, and multiply the average audited amount by the number of units in the population to obtain the estimated population value. So in the next slides, we will discuss how it is done, okay? As well as the similarities of uh, ratio estimation and difference estimation. Okay. Um, the difference and ratio estimation techniques can only be used under the following instances. Okay, please take note of that. this. Uh, first, each population item should have a recorded book value. Another, the total population book value must be known 
and must correspond to the sum of all individual population items. These are the premises in which uh, these techniques can be used. Another uh, differences between audited and recorded book values are frequent. Okay. So to illustrate, okay, we have the following example. Okay, so for us to understand better how it is done. Okay, if, uh, we have here the following uh, accounts and balances from an entity accounts receivable. Okay, so in the table, we have the number of accounts. We have 100 samples. The population is 10,000. Uh, book values, that's 1,000 for the samples. And uh, for the population, that's 120,000. Audited values, okay, for the sample, we have 1,200, okay, so the question is how much that would be for the population. So here, um, what is required is to compute the estimated total audited value, okay, as projected in the table, so this is the question mark, using the ratio estimation, difference estimation, and mean per unit estimation techniques, okay. So that is our uh, requirement. Okay, using the ratio estimation to determine the populate uh, the pop, uh, estimated audited value okay, in the population. Okay, so uh, we will have or we will use uh, one two. This is uh, the audited values. Okay divided by the number of, I mean, the book values, okay? So, this is the audited values divided by the book values, okay? And then, we will multiply it with the total values in the population or total book values in the population. So, this is what we have mentioned earlier. Uh, uh, this is how ratio okay, is uh, computed. Okay, So, audited value divided by the book values. So, this is the rate. And then, we will multiply it with the book values recorded in the uh, accounts. Okay, So, here... Um, the ratio estimation, or using the ratio estimation approach, the estimated um, audited population value is 144. So, here, this is the audited figure that is derived by the auditor. So, how much will be the projected misstatement? So, misstatement will be okay, the difference between this uh, audited value and the book value. So, 24,000 understated. Okay, so this is how ratio estimate, estimation is used. What about for difference estimation? So, here, um, the audited value, okay, that is uh, subtracted to our uh, book value, and then, this one, I guess this one is not 120. This is one, one two, okay? Divided by 100% to get the, the, the rate, okay? And then, we will multiply it with the number of accounts, okay? In the population, Okay, so the understatement under the difference estimation is, okay, this is 120. Okay, meaning this is already, uh, in the difference estimation, uh, applying the rate of the difference will totally give us the amount of understatement. Okay, so in this case, uh, 120 is the total book value the population minus the audited value in the sample divided by 100% to get the rate times the number of you uh, number of uh, units okay in the population 
So 20,000 is the uh, understatement in the difference estimation. So here to get the estimated uh, audited value for the population, so we will add 20,000 understatement with the population total of 120. So here the audited value is 140 okay, for the population. So there is understatement of 20,000. And last, uh, for mean per unit estimation, so how do uh, the auditor compute okay, for the projected misstatement and state, uh, audited value? So this is um, audited value divided by 100 is the number of accounts in the sample. Okay, and multiply it with the total number of units or items in the population. So here, the audited value is 120. So meaning there is no misstatement in this case under the mean unit, uh, mean per unit estimation. Okay, so what are the advantages of using this uh, sampling method? Okay, so it may result to a smaller sample size if many differences between the book and audited values are expected. Uh, it does not require special design considerations when zero and negative balances are selected. And lastly, it is easier to expand uh, sample size if it becomes necessary. Okay, but again, in using these different uh, methods, the auditor should make sure that it is appropriate okay, for the items being evaluated. So those are the uh, different techniques that can be used in uh, applying audit procedures for the samples.